Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Bashamania, the podcast where you can get stories, insight, laughs, and knowledge from the absolute best wrestlers in the world. These wrestlers are not only already successful, having been Big Ten, Big 12, NCAA, World, Olympic champions, but the majority of these guys are still going. These wrestlers are still vying for Big Ten and NCAA championships, World and Olympic championships, and some are coaching their teams to championships. So you're hearing straight from the source at arguably the height of their career, and I am excited and blessed to bring you these conversations. If this is your first time here, I am your host, Justin Bash, and I'm grateful for you giving the show a listen. If you're a repeat listener, thank you. Your support is why 30 episodes later, I'm more excited than ever to keep bringing the best guest in this sport to your speakers. If you want to support the podcast, the easiest thing you can do is subscribe. Subscribe at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening, and leave us a five-star review and rating on Apple Podcast. If you want to support Support the show even more. There's new apparel, stickers, magnets, all that good stuff, hats, all available at shop.bashmania.com. Thank you so much for your support. I don't want to ramble on anymore. I hate when podcast, radio, TV, YouTube, whatever content has these long, drawn out intros. So today we have Big 12 champ and three time All American, two time NCAA finalist Bryce Meredith on the show. Bryce had a big week this week announcing some news that he signed with an MMA management company and that he has plans to transition to MMA. So I thought better time than ever to have the 2020 Olympic hopeful on the show and hear his story and get his plans for the future. With all that said, the reason you are listening. It's Bashomania! Let me tell you something, brother. He gave us everything he had in him tonight. What you gonna do when Bashamania runs wild? Oh, it's gonna be a good one. And business just picked up here on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Bryce, money, Meredith, how are you? Living the dream, man. No. I, uh, <laughs> I'm out here in New Jersey now, and... Really, I just really enjoy this, uh, the East Coast, really. Like, uh, Central Jersey is a, a cool little pocket, to be honest. It's, uh, I'm not in the cities, but I'm in striking distance of the city and the beach and everything like that. Um, but, like, here in Central Jersey, it's, uh, it's nice. You know, you can still see the stars. You see a lot of deer. Uh, you know, things that remind me of home back in Wyoming, I guess. Yeah, and I want to talk about that in a little bit, you know. And by the way, I say money Meredith because I swear I've heard that before. And I know you're just now signing with an MMA management company. Do you have your MMA name yet? Like your nickname, your whatever? Yeah, I don't know. I, I no, I don't have one. Obviously, uh, like the money Meredith thing kind of came came about in college, kind of at the end of my career. Yeah, and uh, I mean that was fun. Yeah. Like kind of, you know, I kind of branded myself well on it. Uh, it made it easier to do like merchandise and stuff sure. like that, but I I don't overly love the term money because it kind of sounds, you know, what I mean, like all I care about is money, and yeah. that's like really not the case. Where for me, it's more, you know, what I mean, it obviously just like goes together as well. Uh, like with my last name being Meredith, it, it just flows nicely. Yeah, it does. People just kind of started calling me that, and then, uh, but yeah, you know what I mean, like I. It's like I always got to like tell people, I'm like, no, I mean money in the sense of like wealth, right? Like wealth is happiness and passion and this and that where it's like I don't I don't care about cash like that. So uh, sometimes I think it gets a little taken out of context. But other, other than that, I obviously I, I enjoy it and uh, it's uh, helped me like sell um a lot more merchandise, I think. So that's for cool. sure, and and I want to get into that tune a little bit. Where I know, you know, I remember th there's different things I want to pull out of that letter you wrote to wrestling um, before the NCAA finals. I think that was money, and I know you said success is happiness in there. So b before we kind of get get off into those, I, I want to kind of go back. You know, I remember Yanni grew up five minutes from me, and I remember your your senior finals match, like being a big Yanni fan, wanting him to win, but everybody was kind of rooting for you. Like you, you kind of been this fan favorite that people were rooting for. You're, you're a nice guy, hard work, and they, they wanted to root for you. And I've always, ever since then, I've been interested in this story in this conversation of kind of getting to know you more. So let's go back to the beginning. Tell me about how you got started in wrestling. I know you grew up in Wyoming. What was that like? What was your start? Like, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So, uh, I'm from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Um, 
the capital. It's what it's the biggest city in uh, in Wyoming. So I'm not like uh, I'm not a rancher. I'm not a farmer. <laughs> Obviously, I've grown up around those lifestyles, and I understand it. And um, more than like I guess the average person, I would say. Sure. But um, for me, I still grew up in the city. I or in a you know a bigger town city, whatever you want to call it. Yep. Um, we were like an hour and twenty minutes from Denver. So when people always ask me, they're like, what, what's in Wyoming? What the heck is this? What is that? I'm like, I grew up doing a lot of things in Colorado. Like uh, my, a lot of wrestling sure. of my success kind of goes to um, Colorado and stuff like that. Just because, I mean, it's, it's just a, it's just the truth where it's, if there's not a lot of population and there's not a lot of people, um, obviously the competition's not going to be as right. good. And, you know, so right. Wyoming as a state, it only has 500,000 people in it. So it's, very very uh there's not a lot of people there so it's it's kind of hard to get the kind of competition that you need to um reach the top i guess you could say um but i think with that being said i think that's kind of also what made me um so tough and such kind of like a hard working dude and everything like that was because like i had to drive an hour and a half just to get a good wrestling partner i had to travel so many hours this doing that um, I had to figure out how to like do things almost on my own because I didn't always have the um, appropriate uh, level of competition around me. Sure. And obviously I think that that hurts me at times, but I also think it um, helped me. And I mean, Wyoming's kind of like, you know, it's a weird place. It's, it's just a really hard work and, you know, it's the weather sucks. It's hard. I live at 7,000 feet above elevation um just kind of like those things and i think when you're like a kid you obviously it you don't even know anything else right Right. just what it is but but like when i got older and i started like seeing the rest of the world and stuff i started taking a lot of pride actually where i'm from i'm like whoa i i think this actually like created the man that i am and i'm very thankful for it and you know just just fortunate for that that type of lifestyle and what got you into wrestling continue on yeah yeah, my, my dad wrestled a little bit, you know, nothing crazy, but he like, you know, he's like a state placer and stuff sure. in, uh, in high school. And then he, uh, so he kind of got me into it. I didn't overly like it at first. Like the first time I went, I don't think I liked it. And then the next year they took me again when I was like, uh, six, maybe then. And, uh, from there, I just, I mean, I, I won my first wrestling tournament. So that obviously makes you like it a lot more as a kid because I had instant, um, success um and then i think just as i continued on it was very obvious that other sports just weren't going to fit with my body type you know i was like 70 pounds as an eighth grader <laughs> you know like it's like a it's like a small child <laughs> right so it's you know there was there was only one sport that and and i was successful in other sports but you can kind of start seeing it very quickly where it's i'm not going to be a basketball player i'm not going to be able to be a football player you know, I'm going to have to do something where it's not size mattered or the size is you're doing it against somebody the same sure. size. And for me, I think that's why wrestling is so, so special because you see tall, lengthy guys, short, stubby guys, 125 pound guys, 280 pound pound guys that can be successful and they have a place in it. And it's like, it just, you know, I, I think other sports, they're just, I mean, they're so body bias right like yep. if you're not six two or yeah. above you're probably not going to be that good at basketball and i just was really drawn to the the idea of wrestling because i obviously i could be successful in it with my body type and everything like that but then also i just i just really started like enjoying the grind of it right so i think in life or whatever i think we are so drawn to doing things that actually like suck right so like we do things that make us happy or you do this or you do that. And yet, and it makes you happy, but the things that actually give you purpose in this world is like suffering and sacrifice and doing those types of things. And I think wrestling embodies that way, way better than other games or sports or whatever. Totally. You know, you are just, I don't, I don't know. It might just be like instinctual. It might be like our primal instincts or whatever, just to be so drawn to like, fighting one person, digging deep, sacrificing this, that, the other thing. And I felt like when I was a young kid or whatever, um, maybe I didn't see it as clear as I do now, but I was just very, very drawn to that. I, I, for me, it's almost like everything else is a game 
and wrestling was like, this is what life is. So, um, that's, that's really where I just got super interested in it. And obviously it took me very far in my life. It, um, like I always say, like, I, I don't have my identity tied up in wrestling, but I'd be foolish to say that it isn't my life and it's part right. of me and it's allowed me to do the things that, um, most people don't get to do. You know, I've, I've been to countless countries now I've been to like 41 of the 50 States and, um, all this kind of stuff solely because of wrestling. And now it's obviously my profession and I'm, I'm literally getting paid to be a wrestler. But even before that, it just gave me a life that I I could see other people weren't getting from their sport or their type of uh, lifestyle or whatever. And I'm just, you know, I was really drawn to the fact of like, I, I felt as if it made me different and made me kind of like stand out and be somebody that I, I was proud of when, when I looked at myself in the mirror, I guess. Sure. And when did you start getting, like, when did you start realizing you were good when you were young? Like, when did you start realize, realizing, like, okay, I want to go farther and farther and I actually have some skill? Like, this is actually something I can get even better at. Oh, it was pretty quick. Like like I said, like, I, w- I won my first tournament. And then as time went on, you know, I I was pretty young and I, I could just tell that I was pretty good. I was starting to get, you know, placed pretty high up in the, the national tournaments and all that kind of stuff. But then there's, like for me, it's always been kind of like a, a funny little thing where it's like the the first time I go to a Tulsa kickoff or whatever, right? The toughest tournament for little kids. Yep. Get my job beat. I go like 0-2 or something <laughs> like that. And then like the next year I go back, I get second. And it's like in college, right? I I didn't qualify for nationals my freshman year. I, I wasn't even top 32 in the country. And then the next year I get second. And it's like, for me, it's always, I, I think I'm, Oh, I, oh, I got it. I'm, I'm doing really well on this. And then I have like a rude awakening. And then like the next year I respond very, you know, in a, in a very good manner. And like, right. I kind of get very successful with it. So for me, it's kind of, you know, I, I was just at, I just, I've just been very fortunate in the fact that I, I realize I'm not that good. And then I kind of just, you know, get to work and I start grinding and then a whole lot of success comes right after it. So um, for me, that kind of keeps me, passionate and all that kind of stuff because uh to be honest like if i if i wasn't successful i i don't i don't think i would be one of those people that would be like i just love the sport i'm just gonna do it I'm right just, you know so for me like it it was a lot of you know i want to be successful i like winning i like separating myself from other people and all that kind of stuff but as time's gone on and obviously as you get older you, you really do like realize oh it's really not about the wins and the losses it's about stepping on the field of battle and being you're like your own hero. And like I say, I, everything that I do in this world, I try to, I try to like do it to like strengthen my soul or like strengthen who I am. Sure. So, strengthen the vision. Like if I left my body and I could see what am I doing? Like what I'm doing, am I going to be proud of it? Would the 15 year old Bryce be proud of what he's doing right now? Is the 30 year old Bryce going to be happy? What, the 24 year old Bryce was doing. Right. So sure. I, I spend a lot of time thinking about the past, present and future and trying to do the things, you know, and obviously I fail a lot and I do a lot of stupid stuff as well, but I try to just do things that I know to like not make me weak. Is kind of what I say to people. Like if, if I go do really bad things or if I'm like dishonest or whatever, I know that like weakens me and myself and my soul. So I'm, I try to avoid um, doing things that make me weak is really what it is. And I, and I think that a lot of that comes from uh, wrestling and it, because it's, it's like a perfect example of if you don't do the things that make you a better wrestler, like you're going to be weak and you're going to get your ass beat. And you said and, that even early on, like with I, I, that, you know, I, anytime anybody comes on this podcast and they have one of those uh, letters to wrestling that you did before the NCAAs, I love to pull stuff out of there because it's like two minutes of just what could be an hour, you know, and one of the things you said was like, I can't remember the exact context. It was along the lines of it's not really sacrifice when you're giving up something for the opportunity. Like the opportunity is worth more than the sacrifice. And it sounds like that's what you've always dealt with of trying to take every opportunity. And yeah, it's a sacrifice, but you're not sacrificing 
as much as you might think because of the opportunity. Like, when did you start developing that mindset growing up that, hey, I got to sacrifice and, and not do what all my friends are doing, and I can't have that kind of life of maybe just going to the movies on a Friday night because I got to practice and I got a 7 a.m. practice on Saturday. Like, when did you develop that mentality of looking at things as opportunity instead of sacrifice? Oh, I, I mean, I wish I could pinpoint it, but I think it's just kind of a, it's a constant idea that I'm still forming and I'm still figuring it out and everything else. But this is what I always say. The world is sacrifice, right? Like there's always opportunity costs. You're always going to have to give something up or whatever. And what we need to do as humans is you need to try to pick your sacrifices because if you don't and you let the world pick your sacrifices, you're not going to like what it does because the world will That's smash sure. you if you allow it to, if you allow the world to pick your sacrifices. So for me, I feel like I, I try to determine what I'm going to sacrifice. And then from there, it kind of helps you, you know, wrestle or battle the things that the world is going to take from you, right. You know, sickness or health or whatever, like the world is going to smash you when you, no matter what you're doing, but right. when you do the right things and you sacrifice and you kind of like take control and you understand the opportunity cost that you're going to have to give something up to get something else. It help It helps it. Right. I, I think it just helps you wrestle with like the constant struggles of the world and constant struggles of the life. And um, so that's, I think that's really what I mean, meant by that or whatever. It's like, I'm going to pick these sacrifices and it's going to give me the opportunities that, I desire and I hope that I can figure that out because if not, if I just wake up and just do, you know, everyday life, like the opportunities that it's going to give me are not, they're not going to be very fun. And I'm assuming too, it's a constant reevaluation. Like I know, I don't know the story behind it, but I know you, you are a Wyoming boy. You're, you're a home boy. You, you love that, that Wyoming life. You go to North Carolina state your freshman year and then you came back home. You said, yeah, this, this you know, I don't know if you want, it's obviously an opportunity, but I don't know if this opportunity is right. And, and you go back home. So I'm sure there's that constant, that constant state of reevaluation, right? And that self-awareness of saying, is this opportunity the right one? Is this sacrifice the right, the right one? What was the process of going to NC State and then thinking, I, I need to go back to Wyoming? Yeah, so, I mean, I think when I went to NC State or in, and I finally decided about that, I think I was kind of, I was kind of pressed by like the world, like the world and my community, right? Where it's like, Oh, you're, you're really good. You're kind of like the star of your community, but like, are you going to make it out of the city? Right. That's like so many people that happens to them where it's like, well, if I don't go to the East coast or if I don't go to New York city, or if I don't do this, whatever, then like, then I'm, I, I didn't make it. Right. So like, I felt like I, and not a hundred percent, but I kind of felt like i made that decision based on what other people's thoughts are. Because if Bryce just the Cheyenne boy just went to Laramie and went to the University of Wyoming, like, is he really that, like, is he really that special? Is he really, you know, that successful or whatever? So I was like, oh, I, ha I have to go out. I have to make it to a bigger school or have to do this. So I kind of felt like I kind of got pressed by just like, you know, other people's opinions and all these types of things. And I also loved NC State too. So like, I, I'm not saying that, that it was just like a, a blind decision. But sure. then when I did it and when I got out there, I just realized that, I, I truly made that decision for the wrong reasons. And then what I always say too, right. And this is where I get frustrated by people when they're like, no, you made that decision. You, you better finish it out with that school or you better do this or whatever. And I'm like, what, what kind of world do you live in that you think the decision you made as an 18 year old kid is the decision that you have to hold on to for the next four or five years of your life. And in a time where, you're probably going to maybe meet your wife or you're going to get your next job based on this or whatever. So I get really frustrated by like that, that people think that you have to stay loyal to what the decision you made as a stupid 18 year old sure. kid. So for me, I look at it more as if you don't like something, be a man and change it. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like you got to pick your sacrifice. You got to pick your life. And that's kind of what I did. I was like, I don't like being out here. I'm going to change it. I'm going to go back to where I need to be. And that's where I want to be. And you know, you have to have those hard conversations. You have to do a lot of annoying work or whatever. But for me, I, I don't know your, your happiness, not solely, but 
a lot of it is r- truly in your hands. So if you don't like something, if you don't like the job that you're in or you don't like this, change it. Like just, you know, and that's kind of how I felt. And I came back home and I had my friends and I had my family and I just, you know, loved it. Obviously like the success was in the pudding because I was in a happier place. It's not that I got to be that much better right. as a wrestler. It was just, I enjoyed my life and what I was doing. And on the opposite end of that spectrum, like now you're in, you're in Jersey training the New Jersey RTC. What was that, you know, self-awareness process like? Cause again, reevaluating and saying, okay, I came back to Wyoming. Now it's time to go here, you know, and you got to constantly yep. kind of go with, with where you think it is the right move. Like what went into the decision to go to New Jersey? So, you know, kind of like I said, like, population density really does just matter, right? You have more opportunities or more people or whatever. And um, for me, when I was at Wyoming, I was the only uh, regional training center guy that was there. Sure. So I just was kind of like, I just kind of like, it was like a joke, but like, I just kind of felt like I was in purgatory. Like I'm not really a coach. I'm not really a college guy. Yeah. So I just kind of felt like I was just like in the middle and I was just kind of like almost like alone. Right. So when, when you're just like, kind of by yourself and when these coaches and whatever when they get into the college season they don't care about you as much right like they have they have their job to worry about and it's very important to them and they work so hard and they spend so many hours doing their college guy stuff or whatever it's like you don't you're just kind of on the outside you know so here at the njrcc we have reese humphrey who's literally our full-time freestyle coach he's not tied to any of these colleges he's tied to us so we get to train when we need to train. We get to do this when we, you know what I mean? Like we take time off when we need to, we go super hard when we need to. And it's all because like, that's, that's what our job is. And I have other teammates that are doing the exact same life that I'm doing. Um, pretty much as like a professional wrestler, I guess you can say. So, uh, it's just for me, I just, I, I needed that full-time coach and I needed full-time teammates, uh, for me to, I guess, almost like enjoy the senior level, uh, wrestling scene because in Wyoming, it's not that I didn't enjoy myself. It just got kind of boring. I was just, you know, kind of alone. So, and I saw that. And like I said, I, I had to make the decision to move out here. I have a girlfriend back home. So it's like, that's not easy. And uh, we're going, we're doing distance right now. So, it's, yeah. you know, like, like we said, like you just have to pick your sacrifices to try to get to the life that you're trying to live. And, and it's not just in the now. It's also like the, what, you know, what is the future Bryce? going to need to be happy and successful and this is this is what i thought was the best and it's funny uh, because you know one of the other things too that i wanted to kind of talk about was in in that letter to wrestling you said that you know life will kick you when you're down but the drive doesn't get hindered and i think it's you know it's something that afterwards you people so often can look back and talk about that time like yeah when i was in new jersey training like it it was hard making the long distance relationship work or you know you had some huge ups and downs in your college career like you said like you didn't qualify your freshman year then you're runner up the next year then you know your your senior year it's right before you you you're runner up again and and you the drive like you said isn't hindered right and and it's funny that you like you said that just before a loss and there you go again having to make sure that drive isn't hindered what is your approach to not giving up to not like it is so easy when life kicks you when you're down to just throw the towel in it's so easy especially when you're young right like when you're young and oh, yeah. and you get discouraged like everything seems seems worse than it really is but i think it's so so impressive to maintain that proper perspective like what helped you to not let the drive get hindered yeah i i mean i think i think my parents really really kind of like helped breed that into me as you know as a man growing up and obviously wrestling and my parents and i think even like uh you know my faith and like christianity a little bit is it kind of just teaches you to like be stoic, right? Or they yep. always taught me to be stoic. I, I never, and I, I didn't realize it until just like recently or whatever, especially because I have a lot of friends that are, you know, now in the real world and having jobs or these types of things. And I, I just hear people complain all the time. I, I think that's just kind of the state that America's in anyways right now. Is yeah. Like, is a very complaining, um, poor me victim mentality. And when I just like look back on my life, I'm like, 
I actually never heard my dad or my mom complain about going to work or doing anything ever. Like, it's just crazy. You know, my dad's a construction worker in Wyoming. He's got to go work outside in negative 20 degree right. weather and all this kind of stuff. And he's, I've never heard him say anything complaining wise. And so for me, they just kind of like created this kind of like this mindset where and it, it's not that I'm, I'm not trying to be insensitive to anybody's problems or whatever, sure. but it's like, nobody cares. Nobody cares that you have problems. Nobody cares that you have to wake up. Nobody cares that you lost your wrestling match. Like, and for me, I, I preach this to little kids and like everything else. If the worst thing in your life is a wrestling match that you lost, like you need to reevaluate things or you've had a really blessed life. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, and it, both of those go together where it's like, I don't know. For me, I just, I'm so, I, I, the only thing I really take pride in, in myself is that I just have gratitude towards like the well-being of who we are like in America we have food on our plate we have a house overhead all these types of things where it's like we have an I'm on an iPhone talking to you right right like, like we live in the most privileged time ever as humans like it's so easy to live right now I've never even thought about missing my next meal unless it's for wrestling right, right. so it's like it's I don't know I just I, like I said, I don't mean to be insensitive, but I just think people like their perspective gets so twisted where it's like, yo, life, life is just going to kick you. That's what it does. Like that's, it's just going to beat the out of you, but keep going. What, did, like what else are you going to do? And did you like, always have that mentality? Like even young? I mean, no, not, not obviously as, as well as I have it now, but I, I think so. I think I was just, I don't know. I, you know, I think I was just blessed with the mindset of just kind of like, let's, let's just go to work. Like, let's, let's just work. Right. Like I have coaches or people around me or whatever. Like they, like when they lose, they like want to pout. They just want to pout and cry and not talk to people for two days and all that kind of stuff. And for me, I'm just like, like what does pouting do? What is, what does this do? What does complaining do? Like it does nothing. Just, just wake up and fix it. Fix your mindset you know, obviously fix why, like try to be better than what you did. That was wrong. But like, just like, like, just do it, you know? And I, I kind of had that mindset as a young kid and obviously it's, you know, matured a lot more as I've gotten older. Of course. Yeah. You just, I don't know. I, and I, I, like I said, I I got it from my parents, but you just, you're not going to hear me like really complain too much. And, and I just think that that's what people need to do is like quit being, Quit being the little victim or the, you know, the poor little guy in your sad story and just, I don't know, just, well, just have I, fun and just keep pushing. And, and I think, you, you, again, you kind of said it in the letter where I can't remember the exact verbiage you used, but it was along the lines of learning grace and victory and humility and defeat. And, you know, I think there's it, it, it speaks a lot to having high goals And even if you miss those high goals, there's other things that I think, you know, it's easy to lose sight of when when you have such a high goal and and you don't achieve it, but everything else you hit along the way, like if your goal is to be an NCAA champion, okay, I didn't hit that goal, but I was a big 12 champion. I was a three-time NCAA All-American. I was a two-time NCAA finalist. Like there are so many other goals you hit in the process of hitting that final goal and that you can't, like you said, I think that's a perfect perspective like i there's no time to pout like i can't complain and you know it, it's it, it's it doesn't do you any good especially now like this year like you have to go to the last chance qualifier here in what two months and try to qualify yep. for the olympic trials and you have all these different goals like you you want to be an olympic gold medalist you want to start transitioning to mma here soon like What's your process to, if you hit a goal or don't hit a goal, to just keep working towards the next one with, with having that self-awareness to say, okay, I got to get better or I got to do this or that, but not getting discouraged just saying, ah, I'm giving up. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, Jordan Peterson, he's a like clinical psychologist, whatever, but he says this and it really, it really like, I think is so perfect, but he says, when you surf, don't confuse yourself with the wave. Right. So the wave is your family, your success, your coaches, your health, your 
the fact that you were born in America or whatever you want to say, right? So it's all these things that you, you didn't do that. So don't confuse yourself with what's actually propelling you forward. Because, you know, like, I, I get why people say it, but like when people say they're, they're self-made, I just think that's, you know, like, what do you mean you're self-made? Like nobody helped you get here. Even the people that were your haters or whatever you want to say, they sure. helped you to get here as well. But it's like, the reason why you're here is because the universe and God and all these things put so many things in place to allow you to be successful. And then what I say is like, yes, you did the work, you paddled, you stood up and you were brave enough to ride that wave. But eventually if that wave, you know, comes and goes, that's, that's just how it goes. Like you can't, you can't surf if it's not there, right? If there's not a wave, you're not surfing. So for me, it's like, you have to keep in perspective how, how much of your success and stuff isn't credited to you. You, d- right. it's not what you did. You know what I mean? Like, of course I, you worked hard and you did a lot of things, but gosh, man, like just imagine if you would have tore your ACL when you were 17, right. or if you would have, you know, broke your arm or like did this, like you just got to look at the, like the success stories of people where it's like LeBron James, he's like never been injured. Right. It's like, you're, I get it. You're like the best, but also you wouldn't be the best if you were battling injuries your whole life, but you've been fortunate enough to not have those injuries. So for me, it's, you know, you just got to keep in perspective that there's not anything that much more special about you than the next guy. You know, you were just very fortunate and you did do the right things, but, um, and yeah, and I even was talking about it last night too, where it's like, sometimes I really, I get really sad or mad or whatever you want to say about like, oh man, I've, I didn't win nationals. I really wish I won a national title in college. I really do. But I can look back on that, on those tournaments. And I'm like, yo, you also could have got like eight in those brackets every single time, just as easy as you want them. So, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, you gotta be fortunate for the fact that like you even got to the NCAA finals. Like you won those four matches that you wrestle them all again the next day. You might lose those four matches or whatever. So it's, for me, I just, I got to keep in perspective, like what's actually going on. And that's why you just got to hold yourself. And, you know, that's what it like, you know, back to it, where it's like, it's really not the wins and losses. It's just like who you are and who you become throughout the process. And if you're doing the right things, if you win, hell yeah. But if you're doing the right things and you lose, like you, you're still proud of like who you were. Sure. And I think that's, you know, there's a lot to be said about that for your journey this year. You know, in two months here, again, you have the last chance qualifier. So then I think it's what the week before, or two weeks before the Olympic trials, like it, it's close. W- what's your perspective going into that? Where again, it's one of those years where you have so many goals. You have MMA now in the future. You have the last chance qualifier where you're in one of the deepest weights. I mean, the fact that you're not qualified, Ashnall, Dean Heil, Jaden Ironman, like you, you, these are these are top level uh, wrestlers that aren't qualified yet. Like, what's the perspective going into that, knowing how bad you want this, and also at the same sense, like going with that flow of not getting caught up in the wins or losses defining your identity. Yeah, um, it's tough, man. I I think it's you know it's kind of like a a battle of like you got to figure out which which side of the fence are you going to be on today, right? And um, for me, right, I think, you know, this has kind of been like a recent idea and something that I've really started enjoying the way that I could wrap my head around it. So everything is kind of like confusing at first, but it's everything is and isn't. It's not everything is or isn't, right? So the the quote where it's anything in life worth doing is worth overdoing, that's the, that is the truest statement ever, right? But then somebody says moderation is key and that's the truest statement ever too. So everything is and isn't, they are both true and they both have a place at a certain time. So what you have to do is you kind of got to, you got to snake in between the two, right? Sometimes you can't have moderation and sometimes you should have moderation right. or whatever. And that's kind of how my mindset is now working. Cause everything used to be a lot more black and white to me where it's like, Nope, Nope. You either do this or you do this, but it's like, no, you can do this and this. And for me, it's when I'm training and I'm trying to, you know, obviously qualify for the 
trials and stuff like that, you know, as sometimes you got to be like, hey, the, these wins matter. If you don't win, you, you don't get what you need. Right. So you better be very focused on winning. But then, you know, then you got to snake back to, hey, man, it doesn't matter about wins and losses. Just keep doing what you know is right. And it'll it'll happen right you know or if it doesn't happen then we'll carry on and we'll figure it out from there so for me it's i i really just got to find you know find the balance and i got to just snake between the two things where it's you know but for me nothing really changes the fact that i mean obviously so i when i got i got six senior nationals and they only take five so like that really sucks yeah. Obviously, it just would have been nice to have like that monkey off your back or whatever, just so you made trials and you can get ready for that or whatever you want to say. But nothing changes. I, in my head, I'm going to trials and I'm going to try to win trials. All I have to do is I just have to go wrestle the weekend before. <laughs> you know, and if if you don't go and win last chance or whatever it is, then you know you don't really. Who cares? If you can't win that tournament, you're probably not going to win Olympic trials. So then, you know that's that's right. just your place yeah. for the year or whatever so for me nothing changes i'm going to trials and i'm going to try to win that tr- that thing and the thing is is i just have to go to i just got to go wrestle in the tournament the week before and you know this this week it was announced that you have signed with the mma management company you're going to transition into mma and I know you've always talked about your passion for wrestling and, and how much you love this sport and, and are thankful for the sport. How has that passion for wrestling, like when did it start start migrating towards MMA and wanting to take wrestling in, into MMA and going that route? So I've been a fan of MMA my entire life. Uh, like I, I say this and it's, it's just kind of, it's kind of silly, but it's like really true. Like I have a 12 year old, boxer dog that's named rampage right so <laughs> okay. when I was 12 years old i got a boxer and named him rampage because i've just enjoyed you know fighting like i've i've always been drawn to like the like we're just like the modern day gladiators and that's like truly how i feel about it i you know like everybody knows the the man in the arena uh poem or you know sure whatever you want to call it yep and for me, I just truly feel that like wrestling and fighting are the the sports that that's the truest thing, right? Like the man in the arena, you step out there, it's you versus one guy. You, you know, you, you're trying to make everybody proud. You're trying to do this, but at the end of the day, it's just, it's just what you want to do. And for me, like, I've just been so drawn to that forever. And I've, I don't know. I, for the whole fighting aspect of things. Right. So I, I like, I obviously love wrestling and respect it actually more than fighting because I think there is something to be said about like, we can go in here and we're going to be in a fight, but we're also not punching each other and kicking each other in the face. Right. There's like a respect that, that we kind of know who's the tougher man without having to do all that craziness too. But then like on the other side of it, I'm just like, I'm so drawn to just the, the brutalness of fighting. I, I really enjoy just, you know, hitting people and getting hit and all that kind of stuff. But I enjoy it in the sense of it's like out of sport, right? Like me and you, we shake hands, we're stepping into a cage. We're going to beat the out of each other and we're going to shake hands and we're going to leave. Right. I don't, I don't like it obviously in like a street fight sense right. or uh, being a bully or whatever like that. So for me, it's, it's still like a, it's really brutal, but it's, still just a game like you're just you know you guys are stepping in there's rules and you're gonna figure out who's tougher and who's not so that's really what i like about it um the reason why i wanted you know and i'm I'm still gonna wrestle for the next like couple years i think while i'm transitioning i'm still gonna compete because i'm I'm just not done wrestling i i have like something to prove to myself and other people that i can still be successful at the highest level in freestyle wrestling um but when, when it comes to fighting there's there's like a, a different aspect to it where it's, you know, you, uh, there's like, you can just become iconic. People love, people love fighting, right? Like I announced that I'm fighting and you know, you get called on a podcast, you have interviews, you, your papers call, you know, calling and sure. all these types of things where people are just drawn to it because it really is. It's the epitome of being the modern day gladiator where, um, and like, this is no, disrespect or i'm not really trying to hate on it but like senior level wrestling like 
these people are the greatest wrestlers in the world, and they're like in a gym that nobody's even paying attention to. Like, oh, yeah. So, it, you know, and, and that's what I mean, like, where, like, that's how you know you really do just do it for yourself and, like, how, like, what you want to be successful. But, I, I mean, I, you're being silly if you don't, if you don't want to perform in a T-Mobile, sold out T-Mobile, and have the entire nation watching you fight. You know, like for me, I'm just really drawn to to that kind of like star, like that star power. Yeah, and it's a different world too. It's a different arena. Like there is so much more. You know, not even just. I think there's a lot of brand potential. You know, and I know for you, like you, we kind of started talking about when we started the podcast about branding yourself and you you are one of few wrestlers that i see making such a conscious effort like you you tweet all the time you have a youtube channel which most wrestlers don't have like you're putting out a lot of content did that mma passion kind of help you want to grow the brand or was it the other way around i know you've been an mma fan for a long time is that what's kind of contributed to to giving you kind of the mindset of hey i want to build a brand like there's you know, a lot of benefit from it, from a from a financial standpoint, from an opportunity standpoint. It, it's definitely something that you can benefit from so far. Did, did that come from your love of MMA growing up? Um, I don't know if it came from my love of MMA, but as of right now, yeah, that's what I love about the the fighting business is the opportunities that you will that could open up are way different than they would be if you just wrestled, right? wrestling it's kind of you're going to do that and then you're probably going to become a coach which i still might do in my life and i would love to be a college coach and that's what it is but once you start fighting it really does open so many different business opportunities and different you know avenues right so it's like my my management team that i've i signed on with right now they they were part of and they got luke rockhold a million dollar polo deal right like he was a, a model for Polo and made more money off that than he ma- maybe has in his entire fighting yeah, career. That's just off, wild. You know, just earnings, right? And so it's like little stuff like that. I'm obviously just like very drawn to. You can you can tell like that's what uh, like that's kind of how it is. I I'm I went to school for business management. I like pushing um, kind of like that business I mindset into the wrestling world. Um, I think I've obviously just been very fortunate that. Cause I don't, I don't really think I'm doing anything that crazy, but people have, you know, been drawn to it in such a way that I'm, I'm just so fortunate for that. Like, I mean, I don't know. I, I think I'm like kind of a pioneer in the sense that, I mean, I'm, I'm the first guy to have a, a shoe with an independent company with not even making a world team yet. You know what I mean? Like nobody sure. else has ever done that. And, um, not to like boast in myself or whatever, because that's, I, I truly don't think I'm doing anything that crazy. I think I've just been very fortunate and the right people have came into my life at the right time, but it's kind of like nobody else is doing this. So I'm very drawn to that in the fighting world. If you start doing those types of things, it's like, you know, it's obviously this times a lot more where it's, you know, I, I make good money off wrestling and stuff and whatever, but, and that's what I would say. The I'm, I don't care about the money that comes from the fighting, the business opportunities that come from the fighting on the, you know, on on the outside of it, or things that right. I'm actually very interested. Yeah. One so, more, one more thing, and then I'll let you go here. You know, you, you said in that letter to wrestling that wrestling has not just made you a wrestling champion, but it's made you a champion in life and you've you found success and, and happiness and, and that's where you view wealth wealth isn't to you financial status it's happiness level talk to me a little bit about that perspective yeah i'm actually wearing a shirt right now that i painted and it's from a it's from a song but it literally says money is not the key to wealth and uh it's from a john bellion song and he I'll just say this part, right? He, he literally just, he comes in on a verse and he says, let me give the kid just a little help. Tell him money is not the key to wealth because if it could stop the pain, how the do you explain a bunch of millionaires that kill themselves? And I think that was, I mean, obviously like, I just think he said that so well. And I, and that's why I'm so drawn to it because I've always had that mindset too. He just obviously, you know, how musicians say what you think in a right. way that you could never have said it. Um, 
but I just think it's so true where it's, you know, I see so many rich people unhappy and I see a lot of poor people that are really happy. And for me, it's like, yeah, of course you want to go make money and you want to do these things, but you, you got to make sure everything else is in line. Like you got to make sure you're passionate. You got to make sure that you are doing the right things. Like I said, for your soul that like you are happy with who you are and you're proud of who you are. And I think that just like through wrestling and all these types of things, like it just showed me that like I've, I've been successful and I've been, not happy, right? Like I went a big match and I've gone home and I've, for some reason, like it doesn't do anything for you. Like right. you thought that, oh, if I win that match, that's going to make me happy. Or if I make this much money, that's going to make me that's happy. That's the American lie, right? Yep. And I, I just think we've just been, you know, so polluted, right? Like you said, like the, the American mindset of that, just like, and it, it's a cancer and it kills people. And I just, I want people to understand like where, yes, go be, go try to make money and go try to do these things and go do that. But also like enjoy the process of doing it because it really is true. Like you, you think the top of the mountain is like where you want to be, but it's really the climb up is where you're happiest, you know? So, um, I think wrestling just has shown me that I've, like I said, I, I think I've been very fortunate where I've gotten like a little bit of fame nothing crazy but like a little bit of it just so i can just taste it to the i the perfect amount i can taste the perfect amount of it where i understand how not important it really is or you know i've gotten a decent amount of money now from it where i like i understand oh your happiness does not really change that much right like it's it's nice having that or whatever right so i think i've just been i've been very fortunate in the fact where it's like i kind of it like kind of rolls out in front of me at the perfect rate or the perfect pace, I guess you can say. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I just like, kind of like I said, like, I just want people like not to be s such victims to the world and also so, um, lust, like lustful about money or this success or this thing. Right. Like I, I promise you that Louis V bag that you think you need, or like that you want is not going to make you that much happier. And I, I just think that, you know, I, I want people to have those mindsets. I, I try to preach it to people all the time where it's, you know, kind of like I said, like just take care of your soul and the rest is uh, just a bonus. Yeah. There was a quote I heard the other day. I can't I wish I could remember it. I can't remember if it was a, a church teaching. Or, I can't remember what, where I heard it, but it was along the lines of like, America has kind of conditioned people to be so blinded by what could potentially come in the future that your whole life goes by wanting more and never enjoying that process. And it's cliche when somebody says, you know, it, it's not the destination, it's the journey, it's not the mountain peak, it's the climb, and it's all these different things. And I think those cliches are all true. Like, if you're so focused on the future, and you say, if I could just have this, if I just had that, like, it's such a lie. Like, when I started having success in business, I could see, like, man, certain things, like, they're really cool, but the novelty wears off fast. And sometimes you need that to kind of bring yourself back down to reality from a what's important standpoint, because that American hustle dream, it's it, it's uh it's deceiving. It yeah, it really is. And I mean, I I think you just said it perfectly that it's just it's just scary that people get so wrapped up in the idea of their wants. You right. know, and it's and that, and that's why I say I'm just like, hey, let's let's grind. Like like let's let's grind together. But also like, hey, let's just have a moment of gratitude. Right. Like, just be freaking thankful man you probably have a math book you probably have a nice house you have a car you have this like a hundred years ago people had nothing <laughs> right like, you literally are living in the greatest top point zero 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 one percent of humans that have lived on this planet earth and you still are complaining all day long you know like it's just i don't know it's just silly to me but you know i understand where people get it and, yeah, and I think because I mean, you've, I'm bad about it too. You know what I mean? I'm bad about it too. Where I'm like, ah, I, I just want this. I need this, or I, you know, I can't wait till I get to do this, right? Like we all do that, and that's just human nature. But you just gotta like kind of direct yourself back to the the present and be grateful for what you have in the moment. And 
you know. And that's why I was asking about your perspective, you know, and I think you, you've answered these things with, with what I think people can take as value because you're right, it, it's resetting your perspective because, you know, I had somebody go through some stuff recently <clears throat> and it was a group of us friends kind of talking and I said, sure, listen, if I'm not at church on Sundays, if I'm not in my Bible, if I'm not doing this, if I'm not surrounding myself with that person, like I'd be a train wreck. Like I got to reset my mentality, my perspective and my heart every single day because otherwise man, life will just take you for a ride. <laughs> yeah, it, it's true, man. What's, uh, what's your story? What's, uh, so what, what you do and, uh, who you are and everything like that. Cause I obviously, I'd, you know, yeah. It's, uh, so we've ever had. I'll give you a kind of an overview. Um, I dealt with websites and, and computers all through high school and after high school, I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do. I, got into some trouble. I never really drank or did drugs or anything like that. But after high school, I just kind of, I don't know, I was headed up the wrong path. And after a year, I ended up moving with my girlfriend. We broke up. I ended up living out of my car for like two, no, three weeks, almost a month. Like it was wild. And it, it took a lot to kind of reset my priorities and my value to say, man, there's got to be something more. Right. And th there's got to be something that th this can't be it. Like, sleeping in my car, trying to find places that are open 24 seven, that this isn't life. Like this isn't the good life. And I don't know where I kind of went wrong, but I need to get focused. And slowly but surely I started kind of getting back into to websites and web technology because all through high school I was building and flipping with, with a couple friends, uh, pro wrestling news website. So we created wrestlemagazine.com and then sold it. Uh, we had some other pro wrestling websites that we you know, try to drive traffic and it was this whole WWF news, uh, internet world that, that was a part of, and I walked away from it and a, a good buddy of mine who lives in Miami, like probably two, three years later, he got into some trouble, ended up in rehab. And he's like, dude, you know, we both kind of walked away from this, but there's something here. And he's like, do you know what WordPress is? Do you know what this is? And I'm like, no, man, I haven't been doing anything in two, three years. So slowly got back into to websites in like 2006, 2007, after doing it and kind of walking away for a couple of years. And then I was just, I, I worked at Burger King. I worked at Wegmans. I did driveway ceiling. I did roofing. I kind of did everything for like two years. And I'm like, I started, you know, if you have a strong work ethic, you you continually just want more and you want to be better and you, you want to do more you can be proud of. And as I kept going, I'm like, all right, I'm not going to be at Burger King. I'm not going to be at Wegmans. I'm not going to be sealing driveways. Like I, I'm, I'm smarter than this. And I think I'm, I'm continuing to, to evolve myself. And after a while, I ended up working for a, a good friend of mine. Their parents own a check cashing center. And I worked there for a while. And then I slowly got back into making websites and slowly got into um, doing different things with SEO. And, you know, about 2008, when I was 22, I had business owners start asking me, like, hey, can you make a website for my company? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I've built pro wrestling news websites. I don't know anything about building a website for a company. So slowly started just learning how to do that and, and kind of submerging myself in, in the business world from a marketing standpoint and learning more and more of how to translate everything I, I figured out how to do growing up and translate that to business. And then I officially launched my company, Bash Solutions, in 2008. And then in 2009, like I wrestled in junior high, middle school, was never any good. I don't even think I won JV counties. Like I won some scrub tournaments, but but nothing like good, like by no means. But the sport taught me so much and I I was always obsessed with it. I think once you get bit by the wrestling bug, like you're done. You're you're in the wrestling world and, and you're probably not leaving. And after a couple of years, once I, I finally got my own apartment and you know, I was so obsessed with working that I, I somehow slowly got back into wrestling after watching NCAAs. And after I think Cal Sanderson, they did a special on him during like after semis or before finals or something. And that was like the first time I'd ever heard of him. Like I, I kind of remember hearing about him when I was in high school, but that was the first time I'm like, who is this guy? And I ended up reaching out to him. And ended up getting connected with him, built a website for him. And that kind of like got 
my internet world to the wrestling world. And then Cal became a client. Then Jake Varner became a client. Les Sigma became a client. Jordan Burroughs became a client. And from there, it was just kind of lights out. It's just everybody's like, man, I want what you did for Varner after he won gold. I want what you did for Burroughs, you know? And then it's like trying to just say, okay. And then like the wrestling world, it takes you by storm. It's kind of like how I said, life takes you for a ride. So does wrestling in a good way. But it's just all of a sudden the things you experience, the people you get to meet, like these next three months, I'm pumped to go to the Olympic trials. I'm pumped to go to Big Tens, NCAAs. And every year it seems like I'm doing more and more in the sport. And now this last year, as I've both understood the the importance of content and understanding, like I have, you and I haven't had any conversations before today really, but I've had so many great conversations and I think wrestling is the toughest sport in the world. And I think what, what makes it even more special is the more I hear backstories from you guys, the more I hear what happened before a match or after a match, like it, it's incredible and it's in, encouraging to me and it's inspiring to me to be, you know, on, on the last episode of the podcast, uh, I was telling um, or a couple episodes, ago, I was telling Jason Nolf, like going to Penn state, you know, Cal has always been a good friend of mine. So when he moved to Penn State, he was within three hours of a driving distance for me. So I went down to Penn State all the time and I never went to college. I went to college for like half a semester, maybe. Like I think like a month. And so I never went to college. So Cal kind of made me feel so welcome at Penn State that I kind of like took Penn State as my own and kind of made Penn State like I felt like he made me feel like an honorary member of the team. So I've kind of, you know, been, been so involved with Penn state and helping the Nittany line wrestling club and being a fan of that. And it's like, man, the, the sport has, it's taught me a lot and it's given me a lot of great conversations and lessons. Like, so I, I decided last year to launch this podcast. I'm like, man, all these wrestlers have such great stories. I, I want to help them. I want to get those stories out there because these guys, number one, everybody needs content. And this, this podcast is great content for you athletes to put out And, you know, again, I get to have so many great conversations on the back end that it's amazing to be able to take those conversations to the to the to the front lines. Like you can't talk to everybody every day. But if if you and others can do podcasts and those podcasts can put out your stories, that's how you're going to inspire people. Like I get so many text messages and DMs from people who I have no clue who they are. And they're like, man, this podcast inspired me like to hear this person who went through that, who dealt with that loss, who dealt with that victory to hear how they did it. Like I had um, a lady text me the other day or DM me about how her and her kids and her family, like they all got ready for school and work listening to the last episode of the podcast. I'm like, man, that's cool. Like that's, that's, you know, I haven't had the platform you guys have being on that big stage of NCAAs and, and, and other arenas but to be able to take your stories and help tell them like that's been an incredible honor for me so in a nutshell that's my uh that's my wrestling story <laughs> no I love it that's awesome man and uh, yeah obviously like like you said and I'm so thankful that you know you brought me on and everything I I love doing I love doing podcasts with people because I, I just like, you know, I selfishly speaking, I like having these conversations and like you, you force me to try to put my thoughts into words. Right. And then you kind of can say things and you can figure it out and you can kind of, and like, as you're talking or like, as I'm going through things or as I get done, you kind of like can almost run it back in your head and you can figure out what, if I'm saying it correctly or if I'm just, Right. You know, and like your ideas, your ideas kind of become a little bit more real and you get to see if they're the right ideas to have or not to have. Right. And it's so for me, it's, you know, I, I love podcasts. I obviously I, I listen to podcasts all the time. I don't even really listen to music that much anymore. Me neither, dude. I'm the same crazy. way. It's it's sad kind of, you know, because I I'm a I really like enjoyed hip hop and I enjoyed like digging into the artists and all that kind of stuff when I was younger. But like now I'm just like. I don't even, I don't even know what's going on really because I, I just listen to podcasts. I just listen to people talk and, um, I, I'm a very, I love conversations with people. You know, you, you stop me on the street. I'd, I'll talk to you for like 10 minutes. I don't, it wouldn't bother me one bit. It's, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to go to the grave with anything unsaid. 
and I and I want to try to you know maybe influence people or whatever you want to say but really I just you know I, I enjoy talking to people I think everybody can teach you something and um you know it's it's fun these podcasts are awesome I love podcasts <laughs> yeah for sure man I'm the same way and I'm I'm grateful that you came on so listen man I'll be rooting for you thank you again for for telling your your story and, and being transparent and vulnerable with it and I'm grateful. I know these listeners are too. So guys, if you want to follow Bryce on his journey through the Olympic trials through MMA, I'm going to link up all his social, his YouTube accounts, everything in the podcast description. So give him a follow, show him some love. You know, he loves talking. So tweet him, add him, Instagram, DM him, uh, send him a message. Let us both know what you thought of the show. And we'll be back soon with another episode. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you listen to podcasts, and you will be notified as soon as the next podcast drops. See ya. And the beat goes on.